Hello everyone, Nancy here with The Joyful Cottage. Today's video is in response to a comment I received from a viewer asking me how I painted my bathroom floor. So I decided that I would upload a video that I made during that time and it will show you how I painted and stenciled my bathroom floor. So I hope you'll enjoy it and that it will inspire you to perhaps do your own floor. Let's get started. So this is the product that I'm using to paint my floor. It's Rust-Oleum Home Floor Coating, and it comes in a kit. There's one can of base coat and one can of top coat, which is the sealer. And you can sometimes find the kit at Home Depot. My local one does not have it. However, the town where my son lives nearby did have it in their Home Depot and that's where I got it. So these are all the colors that you can choose from to have your base coat tinted. Now, the um, kit that I bought here, I had the base coat actually tinted the color that I'm gonna use for my stenciling and that is Coastal Fog, which is this one right here. So that's part of this kit. And then I purchased a separate uh, can of paint, quart of paint, in the French gray, and that's what I'll be using for my base coat. So in this box comes two cans. This one here is the base coat. And then the other can is a sealer. So it's a two-step process. So if all you were going to do was just paint and you weren't going to stencil, you would just need these two products right here. I also include this floor cleaner. It's called Heavy Duty Cleaner because you want to make sure that your floor is really clean before you start this process. I used original crud cutter on my floor and then I rinsed it really well. So it's very clean. In fact, it looks so good, I almost wondered if I should even bother to paint it, but uh, it needs to be updated for sure. So I'm going to do this process. So uh, the other materials that I'm using for my project are a brush to cut in, and that's my angled brush that I use for just about every project that I work on. I'm going to use a four inch roller to get around the toilet and tight areas in the room. And then I'll be using a standard roller. And these have three eighth inch naps. I'll be using this to do the rest of the floor. So that's gonna be my process. I don't have a French gray can in here just right now as I'm filming, but I'll have it when I get started. So I think that pretty much covers, of course, always a handy cloth close by or paper towels in case there's a, a little uh, cleanup that needs to be done while painting. But otherwise, this is what I'm starting with. Oh yes, and also I have an empty container of uh, yogurt container that I'll use for uh, uh, to um, when I'm cutting in so I can just put some paint in that and then just throw it away when I'm done. Okay, so, oh here. Yes, I do have the French gray. It's in this can here. So that's that's the color that will be the base coat. And then this will be the top coat. And I don't know if you can see that color or not, but it's kind of a, a very pale gray, almost a taupe color. So I think those two will look really nice together. Okay, so with that, I'll get started. So to begin with, I'm just cutting around the edges of the room. I'm going very carefully. I'm using my angled brush and I've got some paint in the yogurt cup, which makes it easy just to move around the room. And this process is uh, a bit slow because I like to be very careful and make sure that I get it applied properly. And as I mentioned previously, this is the base coat in French gray.
So here I'm just taking my brush and pulling that paint that I've applied down a bit. It's kind of softening that edge so that when I roll on the rest of the paint, it's not an obvious demarcation where the cut-in line is. I want that just to be able to blend right in. After I have the entire floor cut in, then I poured some of the French gray paint into the roller pan and I've got my large roller and I'm making sure that I have the, enough paint on the roller. I want to make sure it's completely covered and then I can start painting. So I'm applying one even coat. I'm not overworking the paint. I'm just making sure that there are no puddles or spots that need to be worked in. And I'm going over it just lightly to make sure that it is evenly coated before I move on. Before we move on to the stenciling, I want to show you again what the floor looked like before. You can see that the pattern is small squares. I would say they were about six inch squares. I didn't want to stencil every square because I felt it would just be too busy for this small room. Instead, I chose to buy a larger stencil that would cover four individual squares. And then I spaced out the stencil every squ four squares so that there were equal spaces between the stencils. I hope that makes sense. Basically, I wanted larger stencils and less of them. So I have my stencil taped to the floor with painter's tape. And I have a mini roller tray and my mini roller. And I'm rolling enough paint onto the roller to completely cover it. And then I'm offloading most of it onto a paper towel so that I have a light amount on the roller. So you don't want it too too much paint on the roller because it can leak under the uh, stencil and that will make a mess. So you want just enough to be able to uh, give a good coating on the stencil. And I know that some people recommend just doing a very, very light coat of paint on the stencil and then lifting it off and letting it dry and then if it needs another coat putting the stencil back down and putting that second coat on, but I was a little nervous about getting it aligned properly if I had to put it back down. So I chose just to put a heavier coat on and uh, it just seemed to work out fine. And I'll put a link to the Etsy shop where I bought these stencils. They are very nice stencils. I was happy with the one that I got. There were uh, tile guides that you can add to it, which I did, but in reality, I would not have needed the tile guides at all. In fact, you can kind of see the open space on the bottom where I had to be careful not to roll my paint into that. I could have covered it up with tape, but I didn't. I want to mention that stenciling around the toilet and tub was tricky, and it took careful thought and planning. I first made sure all my full-size stencils were complete, and then I trimmed the stencil for the tight areas, being careful to start with the larger areas working down to the smallest areas. And here you can see all the pieces I ended up with. I'm sorry I can't show you all these steps, but there was just no way I could film it by myself. The room is just too small, and there was no place to set up my tripod and all. And keep in mind that in a small room especially, you have to make sure you're not stepping in wet paint. So basically, I had to do a couple stencils, let them completely dry, and then move on. So it was a slow process. A couple things I want to note about the stenciling. First, make sure your base coat is completely dry before you start stenciling. I waited 24 hours. I think the minimum is 8 hours. After the paint is dry, there's a waiting period before applying the sealer, which is the top coat. It's all explained in the instructions. Applying the sealer is the same process as painting, and it only takes one coat. 
The sealer comes in a matte finish or a gloss. I chose the gloss and I love it. I think the sheen gives it a high-end look. I love the way the floor turned out and I absolutely would do it again. And I would absolutely use the Rust-Oleum floor kit again because to me it's worth the price and it's not that expensive when you consider what a new floor would cost. The paint cost me less than $100 and actually I didn't even use all of it. I have enough left over to do another floor if I want to. And I was in no way compensated for using this product or giving my opinion. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and didn't mind me showing you how to stencil my bathroom floor. It was a interesting project and one that I had put off for quite a while, but I think I was just a little bit timid about actually working with stencils on a floor, but in reality, it really wasn't that hard and I enjoyed every moment of it and it went pretty fast overall. This week I was reading Psalms and I came across one in particular that I want to share with you. This is Psalm 71, beginning with verse 17. O oh God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me, until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. I was so moved by those words from the scriptures. I just think it applies so perfectly to where I am right now in my life. And I shared with you, I think in my last video, that I'm going to start working part-time. I hope to have more time to make videos and share with you here on YouTube. My goal for 2024 is to make uh, one video, at least one video a week. And I hope I can stick to that and to share scripture because God is the most important person in my life. And my life, my home revolves around him. And I want to share him with everyone who comes to this channel. So I hope that you'll join me. And if you haven't subscribed, I hope you will. If you like the video, I hope you'll give it a like. And that gives me more notice with YouTube and they send out more notices to people to view my video and that just gets God's word out there even more. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for your support. As always, I appreciate it and I appreciate your comments and do know that if you ask for prayer, I do pray for you and I hope that you're staying warm in this winter that we're having. I don't know what it's like where you are, but we have minus seven, I think it is today. And so it's, it's pretty frigid and I'm happy just to be inside where it's nice and warm and I'm bundled up. So again, thanks for joining me today and I wish you well and God bless you. See you again soon.